consider the project network shown in this network the activities are shown in the form of an arrow and is shown in blue color while the events are shown with red color in the form of nodes the three time estimates the expected activity durations and the variances are shown along the arrows so as you can see here for each of the arrows or the activities we have been given three time estimates so in this case the activity between 1 and 2 the first one will represent the optimistic time the second one will represent the most likely time and the third one will represent the pessimistic time and same is the case with all the activities so for the activity between 2 and 3 1 is the optimistic time 4 is the most likely time and 7 is the pessimistic time now we have also been given the expected activity durations which is the TE which has been given for all the activities now this is calculated by the formula TO plus TM multiplied by 4 plus TP divided by 6 so if we take a simple example 1 plus 4 times 2 plus 3 divided by 6 so 3 plus 8 which is 11 plus 1 is 12 divided by 6 is 2 so we have the expected duration for the activity as 2 same way we have been given the expected activity duration for all the activities and we have also been given the variances so we have been given the variance which is expressed as square of the standard deviation so for 1 2 it is 1 divided by 9 for 2 3 it is 1 for 3 5 it is 16 by 9 and so on now the earliest and latest allowable occurrence times for the events have also been given so as you can see here we have the earliest occurrence time which is 6 and the latest occurrence time which is also 6 days for the event 3 similarly we have for event 4 we have earliest occurrence time of 5 days and latest occurrence time of 6 days so all this information has also been given for each of the events now suppose you are the project manager of this project and you come up with this network diagram and you are presenting this to your senior management and the management says okay you know so what is the probability of completing this entire project in 12 days 14 days and 10 days so let's see how you can find this information with the information that you already know now we know that for a project the expected time follows a normal distribution curve so it looks something like this this will be our optimistic time this will be our pessimistic time and the center will be the expected time of the project now in order to find the probability of occurrence of any point let's say a point here let's say this is x we can find the probability of occurrence of the point x by finding the area from minus infinity to the point x which I am just now shading as compared to the overall area under the entire curve now this area can be found out by using some standard tables but to use those tables we need to find the value of z which is equal to x 
minus mu divided by the standard deviation of the entire project. So here we have been given the values of x which are 12 days, 14 days and 10 days. We do not have the mu which is the expected duration of the entire project. We have the expected duration of individual activities and we also do not have the standard deviation of the entire project. We have the variances for each of the individual activities. So as long as we can find the expected time duration of the entire project and the standard deviation of the entire project, we can find the proportion of area under the given points so that we can then find the probabilities. So let's start first by finding the mu or the expected duration of the project. Now we have been given the expected duration of the individual activities. So the expected duration of the entire project will be the addition of the expected durations of the activities which are on the critical path because the critical path is the longest duration on the project which cannot be delayed and which will represent the entire duration of the project. So first we have to identify the critical path or the critical activities for this project. Now to identify the critical activities on the project there are various methods. So let's use one of the methods which is that if the activities follow the following condition then it is considered to be a critical activity. The conditions are first EO is equal to LO for tail event second EO is equal to LO for head event and third which is EJ minus EI should be equal to LJ minus LI which should be equal to the expected duration of the activity. So let's use these conditions to identify each of the activities which is critical. So for activity 1-2 EO is equal to LO for tail event and for head event. So EO is 0 for the tail event and LO is 0. So this condition is met for the tail event. For head event again EO is equal to 2, LO is equal to 2. So second condition is also met. The third condition EJ minus EI. So 2 minus 0 which is 2 should be equal to LJ minus LI. So 2 minus 0 again which is 2. So this is met. And this should be equal to Tij which is the expected duration which is 2. So this activity is a critical activity. So let's put a double arrow here to identify that this is a critical activity. Now let's take the activity 2, 3. So the first condition for tail event EO is equal to LO. So this is fine. For head event EO is equal to LO again 6, 6. So this is also met. The third condition EO minus EO of the tail event. So 6 minus 2 which is 4. LO minus LO of the tail event which is again 6 minus 2 which is 4. So this is also met. And TE which is 4. So all the three are 4. So this is also a critical activity. Now let's take the activity 2 4. So the first condition is EO should be equal to LO. So EO is 2, LO is 2 for the tail event. Second condition EO should be equal to LO for head event. So EO is 5, LO is 6. So this is not met. So 2, 4 is not a critical activity. Let's take the activity 4, 5. So for tail event EO should be equal to LO. So EO is not equal to LO. So 4, 5 is also not a critical activity. Now 3, 5. So for tail event, EO is equal to LO, 6, 6. So this is met. 
for head event eo should be equal to lo 9 9 so this is also met and the third condition ej minus ei so 9 minus 6 which is 3 should be equal to lj minus li so again 9 minus 6 which is 3 and that should be equal to the expected duration so te is equal to 3 so this is also met so this is a critical activity and the last activity which is 5 6 so for the tail event eo is equal to lo for head event eo is equal to lo and ej minus ei so 12 minus 9 which is 3 is equal to lj minus li which is again 12 minus 9 which is 3 and that should be equal to the expected duration which is also 3 so this activity is also a critical activity so here the critical activities that we have identified are 1 2 3 5 6 so let's note that down here so the critical path is equal to 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. Now the expected duration of the project will be equal to the sum of the expected durations of the critical activities. So the TE for the project will be equal to 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3. So 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 which is equal to 3 plus 3 6 plus 4 10 plus 2 12 so 12 days. So we have found out the expected duration of the project. Now the second part that we wanted to find out was the standard deviation for the project. Now we have been given the variance which is the square of standard deviation for each of the activities and we know that the variance for the entire project will be equal to the variance of the critical activities on the project so variance for activity 1 2 plus sigma square for 2 3 plus sigma square for 3 5 plus sigma square for 5 6 and the standard deviation will be equal to the square root of these now sigma square for 1 2 is 1 divided by 9 plus sigma square for 2 3 is 1 plus sigma square for 3 5 is 16 by 9 plus sigma square for 5 6 is 1 divided by 9 so let's calculate this expression so 1 by 9 plus 1 plus 16 by 9 plus 1 by 9 so simple LCM is 9 so 9 ones are 9 multiplied by 1 is 1 plus so 199 9 multiplied by 1 is 9 plus 16 plus 1. So this is equal to 16 plus 9 is 25. 25 plus 126 plus 127. So 27 by 9. And 27 divided by 9 is 3. So standard deviation is equal to square root of 3, which is equal to 1.73. So now we have the expected duration of the project and we also have the standard deviation of the project so let's now find z for these three values and then we'll be able to find the probability of these three values so here we know that our expected duration for the entire project is 12 days and the standard deviation is 1.73 now with this information, we have to find out the probability of completing the project first in 12 days. So if we look at the normal distribution for this project, this is TE which is 12 days. Now in order to find out the probability of 
the project completing in 12 days we need to express this in terms of z which is nothing but expressing this duration in terms of the standard deviation so z is equal to t minus t e divided by standard deviation so this is nothing but x and this is nothing but mu so x is 12 minus mu is also 12 and this divided by sigma which is 1.73 so 12 minus 12 is 0 and 0 divided by anything is also 0 so let's first find out all the values of z for the three durations given to us and then we'll find out how to find out the probabilities for these durations for the second one we have been given 14 days so z is equal to 14 minus 12 divided by 1.73 this is 2 divided by 1.73 which is equal to 1.16 third is 10 days so z is equal to 10 minus 12 divided by 1.73 so minus 2 divided by 1.73 so this will be nothing but the same 1.16 with a negative sign so here if we look at this normal distribution the first duration which is 12 days is on the expected duration so it's coinciding with this 14 days will be somewhere here and 10 days will be somewhere here so in order to find the probability of any of these occurring we have to find the proportion of area from minus infinity to these points as compared to the entire area under the curve so if we take the case of z equal to minus 1.16 or 10 days so this is the area as compared to the entire area that we need to find similarly for 14 days we need to find the area which is from minus infinity to this point as compared to the entire area under the curve so with the three values of z which is 0 1.16 and minus 1.16 let's now use the standard tables for normal distribution to find the proportion of area or the probability so this table shown is representing the areas of the cumulative standard normal distribution so the entries that you see here in the vertical on the left hand side this is 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 are the values of z and the way you look at these values is for this row it is 0 0.0 plus 0 0.00 so which is 0 0.0 now if your value of z is 0 0.01 then you look at this value and this value and the corresponding value of the proportion so let's say what does this and this mean so this is point 0.1 0 0.1 and this is point 0 0.02 so point 0 0.02 so the addition is 2 1 and 0 so point 0.12 so if your value of z is point 0.12 you first go to point 0.1 and then you go to point 0 0.02 and the value at the intersection of these two which is this will represent the proportion of the total area under the normal curve from minus infinity to the point z which is represented by 0.12 or in other terms this z is 0.12 
and 0.5478 represents the proportion of the shaded area as compared to the entire area under this curve. Let's take another example. Let's say our value of Z is 0.87. So what we'll do is on this side we'll go to 0.8. So this value and here we'll go to 7. So this value here. So 0.8 plus 0 0.07 will be 0 0.87 and then we'll take the value at the intersection of these two points which is 0 0.8078 now for the example that we have at hand for the first value of 12 days we have a z equal to 0 so z equal to 0 means this value here and the proportion of the area is 0.5 the second one is 14 days and the value of z is 1.16 so what we'll do is we'll do 1.1 plus 0 0.06 so 1.1 and 0 0.06 so this one here so the intersection is here 0 0.8770 and the third one we have is 10 days which is again the same value minus 1.16 so now we'll try to find out how we can determine the probability of a negative z value so based on our findings for the first case where time is 12 days and z is equal to 0 the proportion of area is equal to 0 0.5 so if we draw the normal distribution curve this is where our t e is and this is where this duration was which is 12 days and we had to find the area or the proportion of area which is shaded as compared to the entire area under the curve and which came out to as 0.5 so the probability of us completing the project in 12 days is 50 percent so this is a simple thing because you know the mean which is te is always something which divides the entire area of the normal distribution curve into two equal halves so if the duration is at the mean point then the probability is 50 percent the second one is 14 days with a z equal to 1.16 so here we found that the proportion of area is equal to 0 0.8770 so on this curve this is where we would have the 14 days so if you see the area covered by this region as compared to the entire area of course it was bigger than the first case which is 0.5 so we have a probability of 87.7 percent now the third case which is 10 days and we have z equal to minus 1.16 so this point will lie somewhere here and what we need to find is the proportion of this area as compared to the entire area under the curve now we know that at this point the proportion of area is 0 0.5 at this point the proportion of area is 0 0.8770 the value of z at this point is 1.16 and this is minus 1.16 
So from this we can infer that the area from 10 to 12 is equal to the area from 12 to 14. So this area here is equal to this area here. So if we deduct the proportion of this area between 10 to 12 from the area from minus infinity to 12. So we take this area, this entire area and deduct this area from 10 to 12. Then we'll get the proportion of this area on the left hand side of the point 10 compared to the entire area of the curve. So first we have to find out the proportion of the area between 10 and 12 which is equal to the proportion of area between 12 and 14. So between the points 12 and 14 it is 0 0.8770 minus 0 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.3770 so the proportion of area under the curve between 12 and 14 is 0 0.3770 so the proportion of area under the curve between 10 and 12 is also 0 0.3770 now the area under the curve on the left hand side that is from minus infinity to 12 is 0 0.5 and then from this if we deduct the area between 10 and 12 which is 0 0.3770 then we'll get the proportion of area from minus infinity to 10 so let's find this out so 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3770 so 0 this can become 4 1 9 1 7 10 minus 7 3 9 minus 7 2 0 0.1 2 3 0 or the probability is equal to 12.3 percent so with this analysis the probability of completing the project in 12 days is 50 percent the probability of completing the project in 14 days is 87.7 percent and the probability of completing the project in 10 days is 12.3 percent so if you note the trend what we are saying is that 10 days is 12.3 percent 12 days is 50 percent and 14 days is 87.7 percent so you're saying that as we keep on increasing the number of days for the completion of the project our probability of that being correct or that being true is also increasing